This is the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth quarter, 2021. Lesson one from the series Present Truth in Deuteronomy, ready for teaching on October 2. It's titled Preamble to Deuteronomy, and I'm Percy Harold. And before we begin this series of lessons, let's read the introduction written by the author, Clifford R. Goldstein, who is the editor of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide and author of numerous books, including Baptizing the Devil, Evolution and the Seduction of Christianity. The series is titled The Book of the Covenant, Deuteronomy. The story goes like this. During the reign of King Josiah in Jerusalem, from 640 to 609 BC, someone probably working in the temple found a copy of a book, and the book was read before King Josiah. Now it happened, we read in Second Kings 22.11, when the king heard the words of the book of the law that he tore his clothes. Why? Because he realised that he and his people were not obeying what was written in the book. Then, on the basis of that book, called the Book of the Covenant, in 2 Kings 23, verse 2, Josiah began a great reformation. We can read about that reformation in 2 Kings chapter 23. What was the book that had such an impact on the king and his nation? It is believed to be Deuteronomy, our study for this quarter. The fifth and last of the five books of Moses, Deuteronomy, a name that comes from the Latin word Deuteronomium, which means second law, could be summarised as follows. Having left Egypt, and having entered into the covenant at Sinai with the Lord, the children of Israel, instead of going directly to Canaan, wandered in the wilderness for forty years. When the forty years were finished, and the Hebrews were finally about to cross over to the Promised Land, Moses spoke to them in a series of speeches. The essence of those speeches was, You're now about to enter the Promised Land, finally. Don't forget what the Lord has done for you, and don't forget what He asks of you now, which is to love Him with all your heart and soul, and to reveal that love by obedience to all His commandments, all according to the covenant. And, to stress the importance of the covenant, Moses repeated to the people the Ten Commandments, the legal foundation of their obligations in the covenant that the Lord had first cut with the fathers and again was doing so, but now with them, right on the borders of Canaan. Hence we ask, might there be parallels with what the children of Israel on the borders of the Promised Land faced? And what we today write on the border of the promised land, only a much better one, face as well? Thus the topic for this quarter, which is called Present Truth in the Book of Deuteronomy. And that's what we're going to look at, present truth messages that we can take from God's word to his covenant people. In this quarter, we will look at Deuteronomy topically, covering such themes as everlasting covenant, law and grace, what it means to love God and your neighbour, and most important of all, how the book of Deuteronomy reveals to us the love of God, which was most powerfully made manifest in the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection. Sure, a vast time and cultural divide separates our church today from the church in the wilderness, but perhaps what we have in common with them might be more than what divides us from them. For example, could not the following words be spoken to us as well today? Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments just as the Lord my God commanded me that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Deuteronomy 4 verses 5 and 6. Notice, it wasn't the laws themselves that were their wisdom and understanding before the nations, but their obedience to those laws. Certainly, there's a message for us here, just one of many, as we will see in the book of Deuteronomy. Sabbath afternoon, September 25. Before we start, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that 
not only do you love us, but you are love. And what your word teaches is more about you day by day as we open it. And as we open your word this week, as we come to it to find what you have for us, we pray that our hearts will be open and our minds clear and your Holy Spirit guiding us. We thank you, Lord, that wherever we're listening, whether it be in Invercargill in New Zealand or Dublin in Ireland or Anchorage in Alaska or Barbados in the Caribbean or Florianopolis in Brazil or Damascus in Syria or Harare in Zimbabwe or Lusaka in Zambia, that we can come to you and know that our salvation comes because of the death of Jesus and that your word not only guides us, but inspires us to follow you and to be more like Jesus. Bless us as we open your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our memory text this week is 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Let's read that again, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. The book of Deuteronomy, of course, did not arise in a vacuum. As with everything in life, Deuteronomy exists in a context, and as with everything in life, that context plays an important role in understanding what the book means and what its purpose is. A lot of history came before it, a history that explained the circumstances, not only of the book itself, but also of the world and environment that created its context. Just as it would be hard to understand the purpose and function of a windshield wiper outside the context of a car, it would be hard to understand Deuteronomy, especially in light of our theme, Deuteronomy and the Present Truth, outside the context in which it arose. Someone had read Russian Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, about 1,500 pages, in just three days. When asked what the book was about, the reader replied, It's about Russia. To cover in one week's lesson the thousands of years of history before we come to Deuteronomy is to do somewhat the same thing. But, by focusing on the highlights, we can see the context needed to best understand this book, so rich with present truth. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.